Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Good evening, everybody, all my viewers all over the world. I just want to tell you good evening once again. Hallelujah. This is a very glorious day. Today is a very, very glorious day. It's one of the days Almighty, the God Almighty has made. One of the days that God Almighty has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you. Let us pray. Let us pray because prayer is the key. Father, we thank you for a very glorious time like this. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for helping us. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. Father, mighty God, we thank you for a very glorious day. We thank you for the anointing in the service today. We thank you for your movement in the service today. We thank you for all you have been doing in our lives. Father, I pray for all my viewers that will be viewing me. The anointing that was in the service today, 2nd of July, 2017, the same anointing that was in the service today, I release it upon into the lives of everyone that will be viewing me today in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power and the authority invested in the name of Jesus, I say you are all free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, here I am again. Hallelujah. Well, my name is Pastor Mrs. Eunice Sage of Jesus Power Assembly of All Nations. Hallelujah. Jesus Power Assembly of All Nations is just by Damport at number 15, then the Monday 16th week. Hallelujah. 9,000 gains. So wherever you are, anywhere you are, all over the world, distance is not a barrier. Distance is not a barrier. Hallelujah. You, got, you can locate this ministry anywhere you are coming from. All the buses that are coming from anywhere, you know, Damport is a very popular station in Ghent, Damport Station. So anywhere you are coming from, you just take your train or whatever, anything you take, you know, you just come with, you can always locate this church. The moment you get to Damport Station, it's just a stone throne. You are already inside the church. Hallelujah. Glory of Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want to tell us one of the activities we have every Wednesday. We have our Bible studies from 7 o'clock to 8.30 p.m. And every Friday we have our uh, healing and deliverance service from 7 p.m. in the evening to 8.30, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock as the Holy Spirit takes us. Hallelujah. Then every first Friday of the month, that is, that is what I'm just too excited about, which is this Friday. This Friday date is, um, the date of this Friday, today is 2nd. So this coming Friday, the first Friday of July, the first Friday of July, hallelujah, please can somebody help me with the date of today, of Friday, the first Friday of July is our general all night, so get ready, come from everywhere, come from all over, anywhere you are, wherever you are, come and pray with us, come and receive your deliverance. I'm so excited. Amen. I'm just so excited. What God is doing in this church, what God is doing in this church, is amazing. It's mind-blowing. Mighty deliverance is taking place in this church. You are going to be seeing a uh, uh, deliverance. After this message, you are going to be seeing also a uh, deliverance in the, in the, that just took place, you know, of recent, and you will see what God is really doing here in Jesus' name. So don't miss it. This Friday is our general all night is our general all night this friday so if you are listening to my voice please note it down this friday the first friday of july the first friday of july which is this coming friday is our general all night from 10 30 in the night to three o'clock uh a.m in the midnight hallelujah so if you don't have uh if you don't have means to go back home we have people who come with their cars. So what we do, the people who come with cars drop those that did not come with their cars. Amen. Or those that did not have a, a, a means of going back. So everything is well organized. Don't panic. Just come. Even if you have children, we have comfortable chairs. It's a very comfortable and a sweet ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. The chairs we have here, they are not the chairs for well, that you will sit down. Your back will be paining. You know. You know. So when you come, your children have a place to sleep. Your children have a place to sleep. Amen. So this Friday is 7th of July. This Friday, 7th of July, 
2017, 7th of July. Don't miss the date. As you are just listening, before you hear the message for today, write the date, note it down, and come for this all night. It's 10.30 to 3 a.m. in the midnight. Amen. 10.30 to 3 a.m., approximately four and a half hours. Prayers without stop. And mighty deliverance follows. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God will bless you as you take note of that date. And as you come, we are going to be seeing you and we minister to you in Jesus' mighty name. Here we are today. Hallelujah. I'm going to be talking about just a brief. A brief. I want to brief us uh, uh, just about the works of a very special personality in the world. This personality, you cannot do without him. If you don't have him, you are a lost person. No matter how, how big your Bible is, no matter who, you know, no matter who you are in the world, no matter your position, no matter how much you have, no matter your weight, and no matter how, how old you are, no matter how beautiful, no matter whatever, this personality, if he is not residing inside of you, you are a nobody. And this personality is by the name, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The topic of today is Holy Spirit, my best friend. Hallelujah. Make Holy Spirit your best friend. This topic of today. Make Holy Spirit your best friend. And I want to be telling us right now, the, the divine agents, the God's divine agents in the world, God's divine agent all over the world today is the Holy Spirit. Everybody has agents. There are agents of darkness which are, you know, demons inside the side of people to carry out evil works. Also, the Holy Spirit is, the God's, is God's divine agent to carry out the work of God here on earth. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the glory of God. The Holy Spirit is the anointing of God. The Holy Spirit is the authority of God. Without this Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. And in fact, in the first place, without the Holy Spirit, any Christian that has not the Holy Spirit is going to struggle. The Holy Spirit is the person that makes things easy for us. Very easy. He makes life easy for us. He makes situation easy for us. He does everything for us. Remember, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, when God was creating everything, God did not struggle to put things in order. God did not struggle to, uh, to make this happen. What did he do? Let there be light. Immediately there was light. Hallelujah. Remember, the Bible says, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, he said, in the beginning, the Spirit of God was hovering, was moving, was moving, because the earth was without form and void. The earth was without nothing. There was nothing in the earth, absolutely nothing. The earth was shapeless, but there is somebody that was moving in this earth. The Bible said the Spirit of God was moving, was moving was moving. He was waiting for God to speak the word. And when God spoke, let there be light, the Holy Spirit went into action direct. Ah, somebody said direct. The Holy Spirit does not waste time. He does not waste time in solving situations. He is so quick and smart. He is too much. Without the Holy Spirit, life becomes a mess. Life becomes miserable. Without the Holy Spirit, life become with struggling you and i need the holy spirit everyone need the holy spirit the church need the holy spirit individual need the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah the holy spirit move everywhere the holy spirit can be found in the in in the church the holy spirit can be found everywhere the holy spirit can be found among christians unbelievers and everybody hallelujah he's found among us but when you are when you when you do his work he resides inside of you he's always nearby even when you are not holy the holy spirit is there he's waiting for you to just realize yourself as you confess your sins the moment you confess your sins and give your life to christ he enter into you he will just dwell inside of you that's why the holy spirit is not far from anybody 
Even if you are an unbeliever, don't condemn yourself. Don't reject yourself. Don't think, oh, what you have done in the past is too much. The Holy Spirit is just close to you. He's waiting for you to turn from your evil way. He's waiting for you just to confess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. So that he will reside inside of you. That is why the Holy Spirit is also found among unbelievers. But it's not found inside of them. He's found among them. There's a difference between to be found among us and to be found inside. The Holy Spirit lives and resides inside of the, the believers. That is found among unbelievers just waiting for anyone, anyone that will repent. So that is why the Holy Spirit is so special. He's too powerful. He's too good. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is found also in homes. The Holy Spirit is found in homes. It's found everywhere. It's found in the prison. Waiting for those that will just confess their sin to say, Oh, this thing that, you know, I've been doing today, I don't repent. That's why the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a standby. He's always standby. So it doesn't select the people that he stands with. He stands with everyone. He's just waiting for anyone that will receive him. Anybody. He's waiting for prisoners. He's waiting for criminals. He's waiting for liars. He's waiting for idolaters. He's waiting for, you know, he's waiting for everyone. That is why the Holy Spirit is always standing by. He's always standing by everyone. Just waiting for anyone that we, you know, that will repent from his or her evil way, then he will enter. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit is already inside of the believers. And the work of the Holy Spirit is so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful that he helps you in everything. When you are in difficulty, it is the Holy Spirit that will help you to come out of that difficult situation. Anything or anywhere you find yourself in life, any power that is, you know, that is contending with you or contending against you, right from when you were born, that you don't know what to do anymore, when you allow the Holy Spirit to take over, you know, when the Holy Spirit takes charge of your life, of your situation, you will see that that situation, you know, becomes nothing. That's why the Holy Spirit is so, is so wonderful that, you know, the Holy Spirit is, 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 is a kind of a personality that anybody cannot abandon. Because you can't live, it's like you cannot stay without food unless when you are fasting. And this fasting also has a limit. You cannot fast all your life. When you are fasting, you can fast for one week, you can fast for three days, you can fast for 14 days, you can fast for 21 days, you can fast for 40 days. And after that, you come back to rebuild your body with food. But the Holy Spirit is not like this. We need the Holy Spirit on a constant basis. We cannot put the Holy Spirit on a holiday. The Holy Spirit is so powerful, you know, that if you are doing anything and you don't involve him, he is not involved, and that thing becomes a nightmare. That thing becomes a nightmare. So the Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the glory of God. It's the anointing of God. It's the authority of God, like I said before. You and I cannot do without the Holy Spirit. You can't do anything successful without the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. And you and I can continue to have this Holy Spirit when we begin to live a standard, a prayerful, standard life. How can we have the Holy Spirit and how do we develop the Holy Spirit? We simply, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. When we open our mouth, simply, precious Holy Spirit, come, I need you. That is why he stand by. The moment you just ask him to come inside of you, he will enter inside of you. As long as you have, you know, received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Without the Holy Spirit... That is why many people are struggling. Struggling to be established. Struggling to have this. Struggling to have that. Struggling to do things. But the fact is that if this personality is missing in you, if this person is missing in you, because the Holy Spirit is a person, you talk to him like you are just talking to your friend. You have a relationship with him. How do you develop the Holy Spirit inside of you?
is through prayer and fasting. A Christian that does not live a prayerful life or that is not fasting on a constant basis <laughs> cannot operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. A Christian that is not constantly praying and fasting cannot operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so powerful that any servant of God that genuinely carry the Holy Spirit huh, can do anything, can operate beyond what one can think or imagine. Any servant of God that carries the Holy Spirit, anyone that carries the Holy Spirit, any believer that is carrying the Holy Spirit inside of him or her is not an ordinary person anymore. When you are having the Holy Spirit, when you carry the Holy Spirit inside of you, when the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, you are not an ordinary person anymore. And you know what? When the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, you will be hated by many people. Why? That's the people that carry the contrary spirit. So that's why you see some people, they will say, I don't just know why. This person was my friend before. All of a sudden, he just changed character towards me. Check your life. You will see that the moment, you know, you begin to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit, the moment you open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, come inside of me, you become an enemy of some people. So, when that happens, be very happy. Be very happy because you are not an ordinary person anymore. You are now different. You are now being translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And if anybody despises you, do you know the power? Do you know what is so important and wonderful in this Holy Spirit we are talking about? Don't take it for a joke or don't take it for granted. You must desire to have this Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is so wonderful. The most powerful thing in this thing is this when the holy spirit resides inside of you anyone that despises you is not despising you is despising the holy spirit anyone that insults you is not insulting you is insulting the holy spirit especially let me concentrate this on servants of god any servant of God that is operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. If people are despising you, don't, don't take it like it's a big deal. It's not a big deal. Be happy. Because it's not about you. It's about the Spirit of God that you carry. When people are contending against you, People are thinking that they are humiliating you. They are talking all kinds of things against you. They are insulting you. They think, oh, when they insult you, people will not go to your church. Or when they insult you, people, you know, will be looking down on you. Or when they talk against you, they lie against you. They lie against the ministry you are pastoring. They lie against everything about you. They want to make you ridicule. They want to ridicule you. They want to make you a laughing stock. They want to. It's not about you. Anything that they do to you, they are doing it to the Holy Spirit. The servants of God that carries the Holy Spirit, they operate in power. And Satan knows it. Because Satan knows it, that is why Satan is always contending against them. So, if you are a servant of God today, and you are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever you are going through, count it all joy. Because it's not about you. And those that are clapping their hands, that are happy, Oh, we've gotten him, we've gotten her, oh, we've gotten the church. They are wasting time. Anyone who despises God's servants is despising God. Hallelujah. Anybody, whosoever, despise the servant of God. Whosoever insults or gang up against the servant of God is not doing you any harm. Is contending with the power of the Holy Spirit. So you see the reason why the Holy Spirit is very important for you? Pastors, 
operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Pastors, allow the Holy Spirit to be your source. Allow the Holy Spirit to be the one that is, you know, moving in you and through you to meet the needs of people. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to reside completely inside of you. Pastors, allow the Holy Spirit to really take a body inside of you. If the Holy Spirit is the one that is in charge of your ministry, if the Holy Spirit is the one that is in charge of your life, my God, let the whole world gang up against you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you because it's not about you anymore. You have not become a vessel. Because God have no hand here on earth. He needs your hand to operate. God have no mouth here on earth. He needs your mouth as a pastor to operate. God have no eyes here on earth. He needs your eyes to see through into the situation of people. And that can only be manifested through the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So if the Holy Ghost stay inside of you, you can do all things. And God will make sure, the Holy Spirit will make sure, the host of heaven will make sure that nothing harm you. That's why I feel sorry for people that talk against the servants of God. I feel sorry for people that gang up against ministers, that gang up against church, that gang up against, you know, that gang up against, you know, the things of God. I feel sorry for them. Pastors, don't be shaking. Let nothing shake you. Servants of God, let nothing shake you. So long as you are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, make sure that the Holy Spirit is your source. Make sure that the Holy Spirit is your anointing. Make sure that the Holy Spirit is the one that is fueling you and refilling you and giving you the authority and the power that you are using. If the Holy Spirit is in charge of your ministry, of your life, of everything you do, nothing can harm you. Because anyone contending against you is contending against the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul said, the life I live now, I live it for Christ. Nevertheless, I live by the Spirit of God that lives inside of me. If you are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, Everything that concerns you becomes a miracle. But the enemies will not know that. Because what is occupying them blind them. Listen, if the world, if the people in the world, if they have known that crucifying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross, we make him to have you and me Reconcile back to God. Ah! They wouldn't have done it. They thought that they were doing Jesus harm. Let's crucify him. Let's kill him. Judas, his best friend, betray him. Instead of them to release Barabbas to be killed, they say, really? Instead of them to, to crucify Barabbas, to destroy and kill Barabbas, they said, Kill Jesus, release Barabbas, the criminal. Hey, it was just against Jesus. Everything about him was just, you know, it stinks to the enemy. So because of that, they gang up and say, we will kill him. We will crucify him. We will kill him, we will crucify him. They never knew that the crucifixion, the death, Crucifying Jesus to the cross, nailing him on the cross, putting that crown on him and blood gush out, nail his hand and his leg to the cross, will make us to have life and have it in abundance. They never knew. If the enemy knew it, they wouldn't have done it. They thought they were punishing Jesus, they thought they were doing him harm. They thought that it has finished. Let's eliminate him. Let's kill him. Let's destroy him. They didn't know they were dealing with the king of glory. They didn't know they were dealing with the ancient of days. The one that has been existing even before the world. Hallelujah. They never knew they were dealing with the king of authority. 
The one that will say, let there be the we. The one that can make and the one that can keep. They never knew that Jesus came on a mission here. And the mission of Jesus is to bring us out from the hand of the devil. To set us free. To reconcile us back to the Father. Because we lost it during the time of Adam. He now came as the first and the last Adam. To reconcile us back. What we lost during the time of Adam. Jesus now came to reconcile us back to the Father. Jesus now came to reconcile you and I back to the Father. The enemy didn't know. When they saw baby Jesus was born. Ah! Everywhere was shaking. Problems here and there. Calamity here and there. Hatred here and there. They were looking for him to kill him because they saw the star. Just as you today. When you were born, they see your star. They know that you are going to shine. They know that a lot is going to happen through you and in you. They know that things are going to take place through you. They know. They know. The enemies know. So because of that, they begin to afflict your life. They begin to... De that is the reason why I'm introducing this personality to you. The Holy Spirit. He is the one that can deliver you. He is the one that will set you free. And is the one that can do the impossible for you. They never knew that Jesus was here on a mission. They thought, you know, Jesus become a threat to them. Just as many pastors today, they are threats to the enemy. So what do they do? They begin to gang up. Let us lie against that pastor. Let us, you know, let us say things against that pastor so that people will not go to the church, to that church. Let us begin to manipulate you know, but the Bible says, as they were doing all those things against our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when Jesus died, that was when we died with him. When they buried him, he went to the grave. We went to the grave with him. When Jesus rose from the grave, we rose up with him as a brown new person. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the enemies they did not know? Before they knew it, it was late for them. Why did we kill him? Look at now. He has bought the whole world. Ah, why did we kill him? The blood is now healing people. The blood that goes out of him. Anybody that have his sanity, when he applied that blood, that person is healed. Ah, look at. People are not getting delivered. People are not getting saved just by his death and his resurrection. If we have not, we wouldn't have crucified him. We wouldn't have crucified him at all. We thought we were doing him. We didn't know that we were doing him good. So, servants of God, I'm talking to those that are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever it is that you are going through in your ministry, take it easy. The Holy Ghost is in control. Whatever the enemy meant for harm, God is going to turn it for your good. And I pray that prayer for everyone that will be viewing me, whether you are a pastor or you are a Christian, you are a member in the church, or whosoever you are. It doesn't matter. I release that prayer into your home right now. Whatever the enemy has been doing in your life, whatever Satan has been doing to bring you down, whatever the enemies from any corner has been doing in order to put your life down, to make you a nobody today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I turn it into your own good. They made harm for Jesus, but the Holy Ghost turned it for his own good. That was how Jesus, he came alone. But today, he owns the whole world. The whole world belongs to him, actually. But people can now have, you know, say, I give my life to Christ. People can now declare him as their Lord and Savior. When I meet today, I have the whole world. The whole world belongs to him. But everyone in the world have a free will. Today, you and, you and I cannot freely say, I give myself to Christ. I give myself to Jesus. I declare you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Because of what he did, we can now, you know, give our life to him. We can now accept him as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. So you have to understand something here. If the Holy Spirit is in charge of your life, if the Holy Spirit is the one controlling your life, 
if you have the Holy Spirit, you will not struggle for anything. Anything that comes your way as disadvantage, the Holy Spirit will make it to be your advantage. That's why the Bible said they meant evil for me, but the Lord turned it for my good. In the book of Genesis, Joshua and uh, the Joseph. Joseph said, my brothers, they meant evil for me. You see, this Holy Spirit has been in existence right from the beginning. Has been working and turning evil into good for the life of those that fear God. The Holy Spirit is always in action. When you fear and respect God, when you love God with all your heart, I'm not just talking of mouth talk, I'm talking of genuine love. Joseph said, my brothers, they sold me out to become a slave in another land, just to lose, not to know or to trace where I'm coming from, but God Almighty turned it for my good. In a foreign land, it became the prime minister. It is this same Holy Spirit that was in Moses. When Moses died, Joshua was to take over. When Moses died, Joshua was to take over. What happened? Remember who was Joshua in the hand of Moses? Joshua was a minister. Joshua was a minister. A minister means a little bit higher than a slave. He was almost like a slave, but just a little bit higher. Was just a little bit higher. Joshua was a minister in the hand of Moses. But because of the Holy Spirit that was with Joshua, when Moses died, when Joshua took over, Joshua became a leader. Imagine, just from almost like a slave, a minister. A minister is just a little bit higher, a little bit higher than a slave. It's just almost the same thing. They have almost the same characteristics. A minister and a slave. Just, you know, in those days. Just from that low level. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit in him. He became a leader. Joshua. Also. Like I was saying in the life of Joseph. From the prison to become a, a leader in Egypt. So you see that the Holy Spirit takes people from a nobody to become somebody. When the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. You that is a nobody today, that people think that you won't amount to anything. When the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, people see you just the way they see you, but when the Holy Spirit is inside of you, he will take your life so high, within a twinkle of an eye, and it will be unbelievable to human beings. People will not understand. The Holy Spirit is so powerful that when you allow him to dwell inside of you, anyone that does evil to you. They are no more dealing with you. But they don't know. That is the ignorance in, 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 on, the, on the higher end. That is why people, when you are talking against servants of God, please find out if they have the Holy Spirit. Because if they have the Holy Spirit, you are not doing him any harm. You are doing yourself harm. If you ignore them, you ignore success. If you ignore them, if you talk against them, you talk against your sex. If you talk against anointed servant of God, you talk against what? Listen, listen to me. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit is just putting right inside of me right now. Right now as I'm talking to you. The Holy Spirit is just... The Holy Spirit is telling me right now to tell you. With his kind of personality, anyone that is working, that he is working in, Anyone that carries the Holy Ghost, when you, when you are talking against that person, whatever it is that you are believing God for that, for that period. For example, Sister A is carrying the Holy Spirit, is operating the power of the Holy Spirit. And Sister B or Brother B doesn't know God at all. And you see what Sister A is just, is just doing with the power of the Holy Spirit moving and making, you know, moving waves and, you know, doing a lot of things through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you try to talk against him or her. 
you can do what you want. And at the same time, you are having a need. Maybe your need is barrenness. Or maybe your need is you are believing God for a spouse. You want to get married. Maybe you are a man, you are a woman. Or you are believing God for a major breakthrough. And this same you, you are talking against an anointed servant of God. Listen to me. You are not talking against that servant of God. You are talking against the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to answer you by making sure that that need that you want, you will never have it. The Holy Spirit is going to make sure that whatever you are believing him for, at that time you will never have it. Because you are talking, it's very interesting to you. It's very, you like it. You can gang up with people. You can say everything because you own your mouth. No one can control your mouth for you. But the Holy Spirit will shut your mouth for you by stopping your breakthrough. Unless you can break through if the, only, if the person you are talking against is not operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Like I said last week in my message, many churches are operating in the, with the power of Satan. So if you are operating, if you are a minister, you are operating the power of Satan, the enemy they will prevail against you. But I'm talking today, I'm concentrating today on the ministers of God, pastors that are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Pastors that are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, when people are talking against you, they are talking against their own success. When people are destroying your name, they are destroying whatever they are wanting God to do for them. They are just destroying it with their own hand. Because God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. That is the reason why you must allow the Holy Spirit to take, to take complete, complete, when I say complete, not 99.9%. 100% are more than you. If the Holy Spirit is the one in charge of your church, in charge of your ministry, in charge of, you know, everything that you do, in charge of your life, anyone that talk against you, or anyone that plan evil against you, or anyone that plan lies against you to put you in trouble, they are contending with the Holy Spirit. Now let us see something in the Bible. First Thessalonians. Let's go to the Bible. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We are going to be saying something right now. What I'm trying to put across to you right now. Anyone that talk against you. See, the reason why the Holy Spirit, you cannot ignore the Holy Spirit. As a minister or as a Christian, allow the Holy Spirit to be your all in all. Hallelujah. Now let's see something in First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter, First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 7, I read, For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Do you know what the Bible is talking about here? When you read it from, uh, New King, uh, when you read it from King James Version, he said, anyone that despises you is not despising you, but is despising the Holy Spirit. But here is the same. Here he said, For God did not call us to uncleanliness. You see, uncleanliness means an evil spirit. So God expects you and I, God expects everyone that is operating a ministry that wants to see good life and meet him at the at the end of everything, meet him in heaven. He wants you to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. He wants you to have the Holy Spirit. Have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so beautiful. It's a beautiful spirit. When you have him inside of you, you can be 60 years, you just look like 30. When you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit makes life beauty. The Holy Spirit provides. The Holy Spirit helps. The Holy Spirit will make you, you know, to look fresh at all times. The Holy Spirit will make you, you know, to look you know, it's, it, it, it's just so wonderful what the Holy Spirit can do. The Holy Spirit does everything. Everything that is beautiful, that is good, is from the Holy Spirit. That is why the Bible is talking about here. He said, for God did not call us to uncleanliness. Uncleanliness. God did not call us to uncleanliness. No. No. Don't allow dirty things to live inside of you. 
Don't allow things that is not of God to live inside of you. Don't allow, don't allow the, uh, 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 don't visit witch doctors. Don't visit uh, 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 the kingdom of darkness for power. Don't visit things that can make you unclean. Don't visit, don't, don't, don't gamble with things that you don't understand. Don't buy clothes that are, you know, they draw snakes, they draw serpents, they draw things. All these things that, that, that attract Satan. Don't have anything to do with them. Let your life be completely anointed. Let your life be completely anointed by the Holy Ghost. Be driven by the Holy Ghost on a daily basis. People will not understand where you are operating from. You will be causing wave everywhere. You lay hand on people, the sick recover. You lay hand on anyone that has a miserable life, the person will recover. You lay hand on bad people, they recover. You lay hand on people that, you know, are looking for spouse, they get their spouse. You lay hand on people that, you know, things are not okay for. You see that they will be restored. When the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, when the Holy Spirit stays inside of you, you will be causing wave everywhere. Everything you do will be prospering. You cannot be in the same place. Every day, the Spirit of God, as it's renewed in your life every day, you'll be moving from glory to glory. You'll be moving from victory to victory, from success to success. The Holy Spirit cannot be inside of you, and this, you will be stagnant. You cannot be stagnant. So that's why God is talking here. God is saying something here. He said, for God did not call us on cleanliness, but in holiness. The Holy Spirit is holy. That is why he's called the Holy Spirit. He's called the Holy Spirit because he's holy. Live a holy life because he that called you is holy. Live a God-fearing life because God is, is, is so organized and God is wonderful. God is faithful. God is excellent. God does not call us into uncleanliness, but unto holiness. Unto holiness. I'm reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. Therefore, I'm reading verse 8 right now. Therefore, he who rejects you. Ha! Please take your Bible. As you are listening to me, take your Bible and read it for yourself. If you carry the Holy Spirit, if you are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit as a minister, or as a believer, or as anybody, if you have the Holy Spirit, God says, anyone that rejects you, ah, he who rejects you is rejecting God. Ah, is that in your Bible? Please, as you read it, as you listen to me, take your Bible, put it on pause. As you are reading it, take your Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. In verse 8, God says, anyone that rejects you, if you are operating the power of the Holy Spirit, anyone that rejects you, anyone that talks against you, anyone that backbites against you, anyone that plans to put you in trouble, anyone that is talking against the ministry, anyone that is talking against your church, anyone that is talking against the things that you do, anyone that opens their mouth, so if we talk anything negative against you, God said, it's not you, but they are talking against God. Ah, can you see the light, the reason why many people are suffering today without solution? Many people have now become, become church prostitutes. They are moving from one church to another for deliverance. When they hear that Mr. Lagbaja is coming from Nigeria, he's in, he's in Antwerp, they are running to Antwerp. If they hear that Kokopo is coming from Brussels. He's coming from uh, Congo. He's in Brussels. They are running to Brussels. If they hear that, stop all that. It will not help you. It will not help you. That is not what you need. Let anybody come from anywhere to come and hold a crusade in Europe. And you attend. That will not save you. Because they only just have to say what they want to say. Preach and they go back. One day preaching has nothing to do with your life. Three days program that we all have nothing to do with your life. So, that these are not what you need. These are not necessary. Stop going from one place to another. 
All you need is that check your life. Stop talking against the servants of God. Stop talking against the anointed servants of God. I'm talking to people who open their mouth to talk against the servants of God. Stop talking against pastors that are anointed. Because we have just read now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. In verse 8, God told us here, let me read it for you again. In verse 8, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. Therefore, he who rejects you, he who talk against you, he who backbite against you, he who plan against you, does not reject you, but does it against God. This is not my word. Whatever I say to you in the media is always in the Bible. It's not my word. He's talking against God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Who gave the Holy Spirit is God. So God is saying to us here, ministers, listen to me. God is saying to you, those that are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, fear not. People are saying all kinds of things against you, against the ministry, against everything that concerns you in order to bring. They think that they, their own intention is that as they are spoiling you, people will not go to your church. As they are spoiling you, people will see you, they will not even want to say hello. But as they are spoiling you, as they are talking against you, people will just be, you know, things will just be happening that we, you know, that is their own intention. But here, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8, God said, as they are doing that, they are not doing it against you. They are doing it against him, God. Who has given you that Holy Spirit that you are operating on? You see the reason why you need to operate on the Holy Spirit? Because God will contend with everyone that is contending with you. He will not leave anyone to go free. He said, anyone that is doing you evil is not you. But the people, ah, I will deal with that pastor. I'm going to plan. Come, let us plan together in the church and begin to talk evil against that pastor. Let us begin to talk evil against the church. When people hear, they will not go to that church. When people, you are doing it. It's very interesting for you. Listen to what the Bible says. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. He said, let me read it for you again. You evil doers, listen. And pastors, be happy. Let them be doing what they are doing. Let, I, for the last time, let me read it for you. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. Therefore, he who rejects you, talking evil, doing all kinds of things against you, against your ministry, against the work of your hand, is not doing it to you, but is doing it to God, who has given you the Holy Spirit. You see the reason why many people today, they are running from pillar to post. They are looking for deliverance. They are running from pillar to post. They are looking for, you know, they, they, they are looking for who will help them. They are looking for who will deliver them. They are looking for who will, you know, that will not help you. What will help you is just confession, repentance, and you will see the Holy Spirit will just be doing impossible things for you. Things that you have not been able to do for years. The Holy Spirit will be doing all that for you. You cannot be spoiling the servants of God. Spoiling the servants of God and expect that you will live in good health. If you are believing God for good health, He's going to make sure that sickness will kill you. If you are believing God for financial breakthrough, God is going to make sure that one cent, one euro does not enter your hand. And if by chance you are having it as you get it here, it come out here. You can't, you can't keep it. If you are destroying anointed servants of God, if you are believing God for a spouse to get married, that's why you see some people, they are already, they are already going to their 40. No man is approaching them for marriage. They, some of them go to church, they even speak in tongues. Do you think that the Holy Spirit is bad? It's a very good spirit. Check your life. Many people that does these things, they are also going to church. But the difference is the Holy Spirit. Satan goes to church. Everyone goes to church. Abalists go to church. Which doctors they go to church? That is why many, 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 many churches today are being run by witch doctors because they are not wearing coats. Before, witch doctors, they don't wear coats. They dress like witch doctors, but now they don't dress like witch doctors anymore. They now wear coats. They wear suits. 
get a place and call it Toto Soto Toto Soto Ministry. TOT Ministry. They call it a name and they begin to operate. A witch doctor. They don't wear rag anymore. They don't wear suits. So, the difference is the Holy Spirit. The difference is the Holy Spirit. So when you are now talking against anointed servants of God, because you can talk, because you have big mouth, because you have everything to talk about, listen to the word of God. And listen to one thing I have to tell you today, viewers. God is not like you take him. He watches over his children. You cannot expect to be destroying the servants of God. Remember what he just said. He said, whatever they do to you, as a servant of God that carries or operates in the power of the Holy Spirit, they are not doing it to you. And we can see that in the life of Joseph. His brothers, they thought that they were doing Joseph harm. Remember what they did to Joseph. They took Joseph. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. So that Ishmaelites will take him far. So that Joseph cannot trace where he's coming from again. To go and become a slave. And Joseph, when he got to Egypt, he, in, in Potiphar's house, he was a servant. In the house of Potiphar. And now not only that, Potiphar's wife lied against him. Just the same way people are lying against servants of God today. Lied against him. Because she did not succeed, she now said to the husband, and tell the husband, the husband had thrown him into prison. But remember, in that prison, God was with Joseph. Study your Bible. Because the Spirit of God was with him. If the Spirit of God is in you, the enemies are planning to put you in trouble. God will turn that trouble for your own good. That is the reason why the Holy Spirit, you cannot afford to ignore the Holy Spirit. When you ignore the Holy Spirit, you ignore life. Then you don't have life. There is no life. Because when the enemy gets hold of you, they trap you. That when you have the Holy Spirit, it's the Spirit of God that resides inside of you. That they made hand for you. The Holy Spirit is because he's living inside of you. They don't know him. They, don't, they can't get hold of him. They can only get hold of you. They cannot get hold of the Holy Spirit inside of you because it's inside. So that Holy Spirit that is inside will begin to revitalize things, remote things and rearrange things. Putting things in order. All of a sudden, those that are waiting for you to fall, they now see that you mount up as eagles. Ah! When they now see, ah! Upon what we are doing to him, upon what we are doing to her. And they that are doing this evil, they will be going down. Many people are going down, but they don't know. They think they are going up. The moment you are doing evil, you are talking against anointed servant of God. Don't expect any good thing to come your way. I know Satan is lying to a lot of people. Presenting himself as angel of light. Making things to be okay. Making like things are okay. Ah! I'm succeeding. Ah! Succeeding care. The word of God cannot fail. Anyone that does evil against you as an anointed servant of God, they are not doing it to you, they are doing it to God. Who has given you the Holy Spirit that you are operating on. And God is going to answer them big time. So, today, my advice for viewers, people that are doing evil, or that are talking against anointed servants of God, stop it. If you have done it, please go to repentance. Go and ask God to forgive you because the word of God cannot fail. You may not be reaping it now, but it's waiting because it must surely come. God said, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8, anyone that do evil against you, that talk against you, so long as you are carrying the power of the Holy Spirit to operate as a minister or as a, as a servant of God or as, 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 a, as a Christian, and they plan, and whatever they do against you, it's not to you, it's to him, it's to God, who has given you the Holy Spirit that stays inside of you. So for the fact that you are not getting the consequences immediately does not mean it will not come. It will come when you never expected. So please, if you have ever done evil or talked evil against servants of God, that is the reason why many people today, to move forward, 
is difficult for them. They are just making little progress. They think that is what God wants for them. Satan is just presenting little progress. You are going to 40, you are not married. You are 30 something years, you are not married. You think that is what God wants for you. Check your life. You have used your mouth to condemn the servants of God. So if you are, if you are asking God for that, he will make sure it never happens. And when you now go extra mile, Satan will not present the wrong man into your life. He will present the wrong man into your life. Make sure that the wrong man come. You will have a child for the wrong man. Then after the katakata, you will not know what it means to have the wrong marriage here on earth. Because there is no peace for the wicked. If you are believing God to have a better job, the job that they will give to you, Satan will present you, you know. So there is nothing, there is no way that things can be okay unless by repentance and by confession. Repent, turn from your evil way if you are talking against servants of God. Because servants of God, they are so anointed by God that God don't joke with their matter. They are the instruments of God. We just had a deliverance of just a few days ago. What happened in that deliverance, you will be amazed. What the demon was speaking through the person. Just a few days ago, in, our, in, 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 our, in our, one of our services during the week, you'll be amazed that servants of God are not to toy with. You don't toy with them. You don't toy with them. God released angels to go with them and to stay with them. They are not ordinary. Servants of God that are anointed, they are not ordinary. So please repent. If you are in that category of talking against servants of God, please repent. So that the light of God will shine in your life. And servants of God that carries anointing, that is operating the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The one that is backing you up will never back off. He will guide and lead you to the end of time. In the name of Jesus, I pray today for everyone that want to see the light of day, that want to truly repent from their evil way, the Holy Spirit will visit you right now. As you listen to my voice, you have the heart of repentance. Oh, I have really talked against the servants of God. I have really talked against the church of God. I have really do a, done a lot of destruction against the church of God. Now I know I am not doing it against this, the servant of God, but I am doing it against God himself. Where can I go from God's presence? Where can I hide? The presence and the power of God is everywhere. Anywhere you go, God can locate you from there. So now you have heard the truth. You have known why your life has been so on reverse. Why life is not good for you. Now you have known it and you want to repent, you want to change. By the power of the Almighty God. May the Lord have mercy on you and to really visit you and change your life as you confess to, to him today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to lead you to Christ properly by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you have been in that category and if you have not even known God at all, you want to give yourself to Christ. You want to give your heart to him. Say after me, say, my Lord Jesus, I come to you today with all my heart. I repent of my sins. Everything that I've been talking against the church, everything that I've been talking against your servants, any pastor, anything that I've done against them, against the servants of God, wherever they are, in Europe, here, in Africa, or in Asia, in America, any servants of God that you have talked against that carries the anointing, Father, have mercy upon me. Help me today. I confess that I will never do it again. I repent, O oh Lord. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me another chance to live again and to have an encounter with you again in Jesus' name. And if you are here, you want to give your life to God for the first time. You have not given your life to Christ. Say after me, say, my Lord Jesus, I thank you for sending, for coming to die for me. I thank you for the work on the cross of Calvary, for what you did for me on the cross. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. I give my life to you today. Take care of my life from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for all you have done for me in Jesus' name. That settles it. It's no more than that. You don't need to go here, go there. It's just simple words. 
The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. With your mouth, confession is made unto 